back here to my my channel of an everyday life of an SB. If you're new, um, SB answers. I'm all about creating and educating you all with mental health and autism, taking you all on a journey what life is like with me as an autistic adult female when I'm able, as well as some fun and games and other very of videos that I hope to come to life but my main sole focus for my videos are to remove this thing I'm stereotyping against autism and mental health as well as involving people in the community of inclusion not exclusion so if you want any of these and more feel free to smash that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner and turn on the notification bell. So for those of you who have been following me or not I've been doing the topic about ableism because obviously as I shared so many times before I can't stress it enough ableism isn't fully discussed in the social media be it on your platforms of YouTube versus your Facebook and everything else so I thought maybe I should be one of the many or list of people to actually bring it out because as I said this is where my passion lies: advocating and educating you all based on different conditions as well as certain important subtopics that we need to address and this is one of the main important ones I believe wholeheartedly even though I believe wholeheartedly also this is going to be a long way to go but my only hope in the near future that this will be met with people and everything else so this one obviously since I've marked up the order of my video series that I'm doing based on ableism is the history of ableism and the attitudes towards or to disabled people this needs to stop so you may be questioning to me right now how it all began ableism is a neologism or a new word hearsay derived from the united states coinage used to describe effective discrimination against people with different disabilities in favor of people who aren't disabled an ableist society is said to be one that treats non-disabled people individuals as the standard of normal living which results in public and private places and services education and social work that are built to serve standard people thereby inherently excluding those with various disabilities of whatever it may be be it epilepsy be it people that has cerebral palsy and the like traditionally in many cultures around the world people with physical sensory or mental impairments however were thought of that they were under a spell of witchcraft possessed by demon or as a potential sinner they deserve to be punished by God for wrongdoing by themselves or from their parents. Ancient societies or associates used to place deformed or otherwise disabled baby upon concrete slabs outdoors exposed to storms or any other harsh elements of weather conditions or just elements in itself thus killing them gradually over the main course of a few days. With the age of enlightenment in the 18th century came a more scientific understanding of the causes of impairment and those with it often for social or political reasons were deemed incurable and placed in a long stay institution and special schools or today in maybe daycare centers for people with specialized disorders a notion of normality was invested with great pseudo scientific significance it was then based on assessments of impairments from a deficit point of view against normality of thinking of disabled people's movements over the last 30 years. This is not to deny the very unnecessary role of medical science in keeping many disabled people alive however and reducing their pain and discomfort but it is to argue that disabled people should not be reduced but just for the need of their impairments. In this also just to let you know there are some different models that I feel today even though after researching it myself that it needs to be changed and it slowly is getting changed over time but it's, I still believe it still needs to be changed in these different type model sub types that I'm going to illustrate to you all with illustrations here and there in the diagrams as you follow along. So the very first model I want to talk about hopefully is the medical model. The medical model sees disabled people as the problem. They need to be adapted to fit into the world as it is and not just to fit them. If this isn't possible then they should be shut away in a specialised institution or isolated at home or even in a mental health facility or whatever, where it may be where only the, most of their basic needs are met. The emphasis is on dependence backed up by the stereotypes of disability that brings out on pity, fear and patronising attitudes towards the disabled people and also towards just people and normal people in society. Usually the impairment is focused on rather than the needs of the person that has the disability. The power to change disabled people seems to lie with the medical model or the medical and 
professional, supposedly professional associated professions in whatever field of work they're dealing with of the people with the special needs or people with mental health especially. With their talk of cures, normalization and science. Often disabled people live uh, lives are handed over to these professionals that are maybe lacking of education and awareness and understanding of certain conditions hereabouts. These decisions affect where disabled people may go to school, what support they may be able to get, where they may live, what benefits they are entitled to, whether they can work or even at times whether they are born at all or allowed to have children themselves when they plan to. In addition to this, the disability movement points out how the built environment imposes further limitations on disabled people. Medical model thinking was say these problems are due to the disabled person lack of rehabilitation. The disability movement perceives the difficulties disabled people experience as the barriers that disable them and curtail their life chances of living. These difficulties also include in school of higher education and finding work in suitable work environments as well as maybe certain school environments for them assessing le leisure and entertainment facilities, using private and public transports, obtaining suitable housing in their personal family and social life. Powerful and pervasive medical model views are reinforced in the media, books, films, comics, art and language. Many disabled people internalize negative views of themselves and develop feelings of low self-esteem and underachievement which reinforce non disabled people's assessments of their self-worth. This medical model plus the built environment and social attitude it creates lead to a cycle of dependency and exclusion which is difficult to break. This thinking predominates in filmmaking, leisure, work and education in schools for instance. Special educational needs are considered the problem of the individual who is seen as different, faulty and needing to be assessed and made as normal as possible. Which therefore stands by with the age of enlightenment in the 18th century came a more scientific understanding of the causes of impairment and those with it. A sense of confidence in medical science, ability to cure or at least rehabilitate disabled people. Some people, disabled people often for social or political reasons were deemed incurable and placed in, as I mentioned, long state institutions and special schools or as of today known for daycare centres or what have you. The medical model, a notion of normality was invested with great pseudoscientific significance. It was based on assessments of impairments from a deficit point of view against normality, what one cannot do instead of what one can do. This has been called the medical model or the individual model, thinking by the disabled people's movement over the last 30 years. This isn't to deny the very necessary role of medical science in keeping many disabled people alive and reducing their pain and discomfort, but it is to argue that disabled people shouldn't be reduced to just their impairments of what they can or can't do or just the impairments in general what you may see but you've got to remember also with certain disabilities be it what it may be some are hidden disabilities as well as physical can't stress it enough moving on from this the medical model sees disabled people as as i said the problem they need to be adopted or adapted to fit into the world of normality as it is basically confirmed into a way of that they need to do what they can obviously but as we know this isn't possible or if it wasn't possible then they should be shut away somewhere in a specialised institution or isolated at home or from society alone where only their most basic needs are met. The emphasis is on dependence backed up by the stereotypes of disability that brings out pity, fear or patronising attitudes towards members of the public or just towards the people with the different disabilities. Usually the impairment is then focused on or rather than the needs of the person. The power to change the disabled people. Today increasingly the mo medical model is being rejected. Many people feel strongly that treating p disabled people as needing to adapt to existing circumstances or as if this isn't possible caring for them in a specialised institution is a traditional model which was traditionally in many cultures around the world people with physical Surgery or mental impairments were thought as of under the spell of witchcraft, possessed by demons, or as I said, are penitent sinners, being punished by God for wrongdoing for themselves or the parent. The social model in recent years has been shown by the disability movement has advocated a different way of looking at disability, which they call the social model. This starts from the standpoint of all disabled adult children's right to belong and be valued in their local community. Using this model, you start by looking at the strengths of the person with the impairment and at the physical and social barriers that may obstruct them. 
whether at school, college, home or at work or wherever they may be. The social model defines impairment and disability as very different things like we define many other things as different things. So the definition in this social model that they defined it as impairment is the loss or limitation of physical, mental or sensory function on a long term or permanent basis. Disablement is the loss or limitation of opportunities to take part in the normal life of a community on an equal level with the others due to physical and social barriers. And obviously this was brought about in the Disabled People's International 1980 in the year 1981. Impairment and chronic illnesses exist and sometimes pose real difficulties with people with different needs. Supporters of the disability movement believe that the discrimination against disabled people is socially created and it has little to do with their impairment and that regardless of the type or severity of their impairments however disabled people are subjected to a common impression by the non-disabled world. Are of the main feel it's their own fault and that they are different. If some part or parts of their body or mind are limited in their functioning, this is simply an impairment in the eyes of the able bodies community. It doesn't make you feel any less human, however, but most people have been brought up to accept all people as they are, in other words, to value the difference of all people. Through fear, ignorance and prejudice, barriers and discrimination develop which disable, dis disable some people. These are often reinforced by images in the media, but and the like of any other resources, understanding this process allows disabled people to feel good about themselves and empowers them to fight for their own human rights. Because I believe in this day and age, we people with different conditions have rights to live, we have rights to our education, rights to everything of the five freedoms in the you know Human Rights Act of 1993 that was brought out. But then again, that Human Rights Act needs to be changed again, I believe. The social model approach suggest disabled people's disadvantage is due to a complex form of institutional discrimination as fundamental to society as sexism, racism or heterosexism. Disability movement believes the cure again quote unquote cure to the problem of disability lies in changing society and people's way of thinking. Unlike medically based cures this is an unchecked an achievable goal goal and benefits everyone the obsession with finding medically based cures also distracts people from looking at the causes of impairment or disease in a worldwide sense though however most impairments are created by wars hunger or lack of clean water exploitation of labor lack of safety and child abuse and those should be addressed more robustly rather than just responding to the injuries and impairments that resulted from them. Discrimination. The presumption that everyone is non-disabled is said to encourage environments that are accessible for disabled people. It's a system by the mainstream that has been created that denigrates, devalue and thus oppress those with certain disabilities while privileging those without disabilities according to those who describe ableist circumstances. In some extreme cases, morality, worth and intelligence may even be equated to being able-bodied or able-minded. While disability is conflated with immorality, stupidity and worthlessness, and disabled lives may be devalued, the eugenics movement of the 19th and 20th centuries, which took its most extreme form in Nazi Germany, was a product of this form of belief system. And how some believe the right to die movement is also an outgrowth of ableist beliefs. As I said before, inclusion comparability means that all product services and social tool opportunities and resources are fully accessible for those that really need it most, especially those that are disabled people. That are also welcoming, functional and usable for as many different types of abilities as reasonably as possible as well. An ableist society tends towards isolation, pity, paternalism and low self-esteem among people with disability. Whereas inclusive society towards, tends towards sociability and independency between the able-bodied and the disabled body in the community. Challenging prejudice. Social model thinking has impairment implications for the education system and particularly primary and, sec and, primary and secondary schools. Prejudices attitudes towards disabled people and all minority groups are just not 
and I. They are learned through contact with the prejudice and ignorance of others. Sometimes it may stem from the parents when they've been brought up and whatnot, who knows, and then it's the environment they're in or what they may have seen and heard on TVs, movies and what have you. Therefore, it's appropriate that the challenge to dis discrimination against people that are disabled should begin in schools, I believe, or even in the homes if basically the parents are willing to teach their children. The fight for the inclusion of all disabled people how severe their impairments are in one mainstream social system system will not make sense unless people understand the differences between the social and medical model of the disability as I mentioned. The social model however has now been adopted by the organization called World Health Organization. So the question is who is disabled? People who have impairment and experience some form of social exclusion as a result are disabled people. Many people with impairments such as those who use glasses, contact lenses, they aren't usually discriminated against whereas people who are deaf and or using hearing aids are usually discriminated against by their barriers and communication. Therefore, disabled people may include the following with a physical impairment such as your sensory impairment, deaf people, blind people, chronic illnesses or health issues including HIV and AIDS, all degrees of learning difficulties be it ADHD, ADD, autism or the like, emotional, mental health and behavioural problems. The deficient vision also includes people with hidden impairments like I've shared, basically there is some hidden impairments or disabilities such as epilepsy, diabetes, sickle cell anemia, specific learning difficulties such as dyslexia, speech and language impairment, children labelled as delicate, people who identify themselves as disfigured, people of the immune stature, people with mental distress. And the last bit of this is disabled people fight for equality. As I said, in the last 30 years there has been disabled people who have been campaigning for and one our human rights based approach to disability. It's the beginning to be accepted that disability, discrimination, prejudice, negative attitudes and stereotypes aren't acceptable, which I'll clearly mention that basically the movie documentary I was watching is based on all around this as well, about ableism and the human rights act and whatever else. The struggles of disabled people to gain civil rights have led to legislation in the USA. The Americans with Disabilities Act 1990 it was introduced. In the UK however the Disability Discrimination Act started in 1995 and many other countries including South Africa, India and Australia. The United Nations adopted the UN standard rules on equalization in 1992. In all these measures the onus is one eliminating discrimination by bringing in enforceable civil rights legislation based on the idea that adjustments need to be made to services, buildings, transport, workplaces, environment, communications and equipment to allow disabled people to access those of what they need. Pre prejudicial attitudes and practices are outlawed and institutional discrimination in the form of organisation which excludes disabled people are still being challenged today. However, negative attitudes, stereotypes and distorted portrayals of disabled people's lives still are predominant in some commercial films and just in today's society still. The increasing capacity of the world media system to recycle moving image media means that despite with the legalization negative views are continually reinforced through certain films. Example wise the Crip Camp that I'm about to introduce to you in one of my video series of this ableism so stay tuned for that. So this quickly ends hopefully a short brief information about the history of ableism and the attitudes towards disabled people. Smash the like if you like this comment below if you feel that like based on the history of ableism and the attitudes towards negative attitudes especially towards disabled people how should it be changed does it need to be changed you know what have you been through that you know excluded you through society and maybe your and for us all maybe when it comes down to you having that form of disability what do you want the others to know about you as a person with a disability oh no for the guys don't forget to follow me on my social media as well as also just following me through whatever I mean so enough for the day guys thanks for watching do what love love you do until next time I'll see you again soon ciao for now